Hey, first graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So we finished up our unit on force and motion. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about something called natural resources. And natural resources are things that are made by the earth. That's what natural means. And resources are things that we use. So natural resources are things that we use that come from the earth. So the first natural resource that we're going to be talking about this week is soil. So let's get started. Your target says I can observe, compare, describe, and sort components of soil by size, texture, and color. So soil is a mixture and it's made up of lots of different things. A lot of times we just think about soil as being, you know, we're like, oh, that's just dirt. It's not important, but soil is actually extremely important. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So it's a mixture made up of tiny pieces of rock, minerals, decayed plant and animal matter. So that might be things like dead leaves, pieces of roots, um, wood chips or bark from trees. Um, that could be dead bugs or, um, you know, uh, exoskeletons of bugs, worm casings, um, waste from bugs when they use the bathroom. All of that would be considered decayed plant and animal matter. Water is in soil and air. So um, lots of different things can be found in soil and they make soil what it is. And soil, like I was telling you before, is extremely important. Without soil, plants and trees would not be able to grow. And without plants and trees, we would not have clean air to breathe we would not have food to eat. So soil is extremely important. It's also home for um, bugs and animals. A lot of animals make their home in the soil. So what we're gonna do here today in class is we're gonna be looking at three different types of soil, clay soil, sandy soil, and silt. And we're going to compare the size of the particles, their texture or how they feel and their color. If this is something you choose to do at home, I would love to see your soil samples and hear what you came up with. Um, if you are unable to get all these different types of soil, you could just go, you know, dig in your backyard with your parents' permission or somewhere and collect a little sample of soil and see what sorts of things you can find in there. Here's my email address. If that's something you choose to do, I'd love to see it. So here in class, I told you we're looking at three different types of soil. The first one that we're going to be looking at is called clay soil. And clay soil looks like this. It may be difficult for you to see, but clay soil is actually kind of a reddish brown, almost like a rusty color. Okay, and the particles in clay soil are very, very tiny, almost like a dust. I don't know if you can see that, but if you see these larger kind of pieces that it appears that are in clay soil, those are either rocks or clumps of clay soil packed together. Those aren't the actual particles. The actual particles are very, very tiny, almost like a dust. So um, we could say that clay soil has tiny particles. I'm going to show you what happens to clay soil when clay soil gets wet. And when clay soil get, gets wet, it turns into almost like a paste, like clay. That's why it's called clay soil. So I don't know if you can see this, but um, if you've ever touched clay soil before, it's very sticky and gooey. And it feels just like clay, like modeling clay. In fact, there are um, a lot of cultures around the world who use clay soil for things like building their homes or building dishes and bowls and vases and things like that. Because when clay soil gets wet, um, it's easy to mold and shape. 
And then when it dries, it hardens into whatever shape. So a lot of cultures, a lot of people use clay soil for different, to make different things. Um, clay soil is not very good for growing most plants. And the reason is because since the particles are so small and since it gets this kind of sticky, gooey, very thick consistency once it gets wet, it does not allow a lot of air to flow through it. So um, what that means is that um, the roots don't get enough air. And also, since it's very thick and sticky like this, it holds in a lot of water. So the plants, most plants get too much water and not enough air in clay soil. There are some plants, however, that have adapted to be able to live in this type of soil. This type of soil is found around um, bodies of water, things like um, lakes, ponds, marshes, things like that. So plants that you would find growing near the water are have specifically adapted to be able to survive in this type of soil where there's not a lot of airflow, but um, a lot of water can, can be retained or held in. Okay, so that's clay soil. To summarize, it's a reddish orangish color. The particles are very, very tiny. And it is um, kind of a sticky and gooey texture when it gets wet. When it gets, when it's dry, it's more of kind of a softer, softer texture. Okay, that's the clay soil. The next one we're going to talk about is <clears throat> sand, sandy soil. Okay, and sand, you can see this sand that I have is kind of like a, light brownish beige color. There's some specks of, of different colors in there as well, but overall it's kind of like a light brownish beige color. When we talk about the particle size of sand, let me see if I can pick some up and show you. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. So we think of sand being small, right? If you were to ask somebody, how big is it? a grain of sand, they would say it's very, very small. And it is. However, compared to the clay soil and the other type of soil that we are going to talk about, the, the particles of sand are actually considered large. If you look at the particles of sand compared to the particles of clay soil, which I told you is almost like a dust or a powder, the sand particles are much, much larger, okay? So that would be its particle size. And then its texture, when I feel it, sand is very rough, very bumpy, all right? So there's our sand. Sand is also not great by itself for growing plants because since the particle pieces are larger and there's more space between the particles, um, sand is not very good at retaining or holding in water. So a lot of water will go through it. The plant may not be able to get enough water to survive. However, just like the clay soil, there are plants that have adapted to be able to survive in sandy soil. Plants that live in the desert specifically that don't need a ton of water in order to survive, they are able to survive in a sandier soil. All right, and then the last um, type of soil that we're going to look at is called silt. And silt is a, silt is a dark brown color, okay? And um, when I feel the silt, it is kind of rough, not as rough as the sand, but a little bit rough, bumpy. And um, the particle size is medium. So the particles of silt are larger than the particles of clay, but not as large as the sand particles. So we would say that it has a medium particle size. Um, so the, the, the trick here is that the best soil for growing most plants is a combination of all three of these soils, clay soil, sandy soil, and silt. 
When those are combined together, we get something called loam, which is what potting soil is created out of. And because each of these soils have their own qualities or characteristics, um, they work really well together. And together they create the healthiest type of soil, the best type of soil for um, growing most plants and for what most plants prefer. So to recap, let's talk about the colors. We have clay soil, which is a reddish brown. We have sand, which is a light brownish tan, and we have silt, which is a dark brown. When we're talking about particle size, our clay particles are tiny, our sand particles are large, our silt particles are medium sized. And then when we talk about texture, when the clay soil is dry, it's kind of smooth and uh, powdery. When it's wet, it's kind of thick and sticky. The sand is very rough. And the silt is also rough, but not as rough as the, the sand. All right. I hope that you had fun learning about some different types of soil. Again, if, if this is something you choose to do at home, it's not required. Um, I would love to see what type of soil you find. Um, I'd love to see what types of things you, you find in the soil. Maybe you'll find some bugs or some worms. Make sure you have a parent's permission, especially if you are digging holes in their yard or um, bringing it inside. Make sure you get permission to do that. Hope you had fun. I will talk to you next week when we continue learning about natural resources. Bye, guys.